Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 26, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Unless you are sleeping under a real, real big rock, you are probably aware with how macros in Office and Excel can get started automatically as a user opens the document. Now, PowerPoint didn't really, at least at first look, have a feature like this, but Xavier came across an interesting PowerPoint template that actually does just that. Now, this PowerPoint template actually turns out to be a PowerPoint add-in, an extension uh, to PowerPoint. And once the user opens it, yes, it's able to automatically execute macros using its own set of functions to do so. In this particular case, it's actually even a little bit more twisted in that the macro is started when the PowerPoint file is closed. They're using the auto close method here, probably uh, trying to further evade signatures that are looking for these specific uh, features or functions that usually are being called as the document is opened. And since uh, the PowerPoint file is otherwise empty, it's likely that the user after opening it will immediately close the document. You may learn more about this particular technique from Xavier's uh, diary who walks through the analysis of this particular file step by step. And talking about odd ways to deliver malware, the Ragnar Locker ransomware crew uh, came up with well, a little bit of cumbersome way to deliver malware in delivering an entire virtual machine. Now, the virtual machine is the micro XP edition of Windows XP running within Oracle Virtual Box. And what's being delivered here is actually about... Uh, 280, uh, I believe, megabytes of code. So the hypervisor, uh, so virtual box is being delivered. In addition to then the disk image with uh, micro XP and well, the actual ransomware executable is actually just uh, 49 kilobytes. But of course, the idea here is that anti-malware typically does not inspect virtual disk images, something that we actually sort of take advantage of in class in not having a lot of problems with antivirus intercepting, for example, attack tools and such that uh, we do use in many of our classes. And when Apple released its iOS update uh, last week, I noted that we don't really have any security bulletins yet from Apple about this update. Now, we got a little bit of insight into one important security fix here from ZecOps. ZecOps uh, did originally reveal the remote code execution problem in the mailer daemon in iOS. And they took a look at the patch in iOS 13.5. And yes, this vulnerability is patched now. Now, this was sort of expected because some of the beta versions already had a patch uh, included. But uh, the patch of the beta version was actually not complete yet, was bypassable. According to ZecOps, uh, the final patch in 13.5 does fix this vulnerability completely. And Martin Brinkman from ghacks.net discovered that uh, eBay is loading some JavaScript into users' browsers that will perform a brief port scan. Now, the ports being scanned here are only scanned on localhost, and these are sort of common uh, remote admin tool uh, ports. What this is likely all about is that eBay actually bought a company called Threatmetrics uh, a while ago, and this company, like others, Fox IT, according to uh, Boyan, one of our handlers, has a similar uh, tool, a similar offering. Banks have been using this. And the idea is to essentially assign sort of risk scores uh, to users to figure out how 
likely it is that a particular system is compromised with tools like uh, man in the browser tools and such that will modify the content of data in the browser or also just a straightforward uh, trojans and backdoors which is probably what the port scan is about so uh, typically running a tool like vnc's for example one of the ports being scanned here won't necessarily lock you out of the site but this in addition to other risky indicators like maybe very large transactions or an unusual IP address may very well then trick an alert and get you locked out. And then we got yet another new jailbreak tool for iOS. And now uh, this tool covers all versions of iOS from 11 until the just released version 13.5 and relies on an unpatched zero day bug in these versions of iOS. Of course, the reason this is relevant is that jailbreaking would allow an attacker with access to the phone to uh, remove some of the security features in iOS and then, for example, install malware on the phone. Well, and that's it again for today. Thanks again for listening. And remember, sans fire, only a couple of weeks out. So if you haven't registered yet, take a look at all the classes we offer live online for the event. And we are working on trying to do as much as possible as we can, sort of in addition to the classes, to give it sort of the usual Internet Storm Center feel. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.